When I was younger, I wanted to be a writer. I kept diaries, I had pen pals, and I was always just telling stories, often getting myself in trouble as a result. My nan's brother was a journalist, and despite only having met him a few times, I used to write to him and ask him how I could make this happen for me. And his response was always the same. If you want to be a writer, you have to write. And at the time I thought this advice was stupid, and I even stopped writing for a bit. But now, I know he was spot on. If you want to become a writer, you must write. If you want to become a runner, you must run. It's simple. You just have to do the thing that you want to become. You don't have to be good at it, you just have to do it. Now I've spent most of my adult life overweight, or fat if you prefer. So you might think it's a bit strange that I'd like to be in the spotlight like this. But in fact, I've spent many years avoiding cameras and public speaking for this very reason. But do you know what I've realized this year? If you want to see change in this world, you have to stand up and be the change. And you have to be seen to be the change. Two weeks ago, I was lucky enough to see a guy called Jonathan Sandy give a talk entitled, Speak Like Churchill. He was in fact the great grandson of the past Prime Minister, and he told us all about the historical context to which his great grandfather's speeches were made, which is quite timely considering what's going on in the world. At one point he asked the audience, what is the biggest threat to the UK at the moment? To which of course everyone responded, terrorism. But actually they were wrong. Because just that very week, a shocking headline had hit the news, stating that obesity is a bigger threat than terrorism for the UK. But political speeches about obesity, well they're not sexy. And they're not gonna get anyone promoted into cabinet and no one's going to go down in history as having said the most significant of obesity speeches. I mean, could you imagine Churchill's style speech on obesity? We have before us an ordeal of the most grievous kind. We have before us many, many long months of struggle and of suffering. You ask what is our policy? I will say it is to wage war with all our might and with all the strength that God can give us to wage war against a monstrous tyranny never surpassed in the dark and lamented catalogue of human crime. We will fight them in McDonald's. We will fight them in the supermarket aisle. We will fight against buy one, get one free and fizzy drinks in our school canteens. We will fight like we have never fought before to rid this green and pleasant land of every last bulge and curve and wobble until we are victorious. Now, of course, I'm just being flippant. But the fact that the chief medical officer feels that obesity in adult women is such a pressing matter, it doesn't surprise me or shock me. And I think it's very much time to take up metaphorical arms because, sadly, women all over the world are battling with their bodies. And images of the female fat body are being used as a weapon against us in this so-called war on obesity, which we all see being played out in the media. I speak to thousands of women each year about their health and their weight and they tell me time and time again that actually their size is not what's important to them but it's their health and their sense of well-being. We don't care whether we can get into a size 8 pair of jeans, we just want to find peace with our bodies. I often ask this question, are we unhappy because we are fat or are we fat because we are unhappy? There's huge inequality when it comes to health. Two million fewer women play sport than men in this country. Now why is that? It's not because women don't want to. It's because we are fearful of being judged. Plus, we've got too many other things on our to-do list. Men are like, right, I'm off to play footy. Without a second thought about childcare or cooking dinner or who's going to do the washing. But with many women who are the, the caregivers in their family, the kids come first, then the husband, then their job, then the house. You know, when are we going to start putting ourselves first? When are we going to realise just how important we are to the future of our species? Like seriously, it's not a joke. How are we ever going to find peace with our bodies if we don't start appreciating them and showing them that we care? My book, New Year, Same You, it's not about diets or exercise, 
although of course it does talk about those things, but instead it's about balance. It's about finding a place where you can be the best version of yourself, but given the current, uh, current circumstances that you have to work within. Sometimes we have the best intentions in the world, and then something shitty happens, and we just have to cope however we can. We just need to stop shaming ourselves over it. The thing is, the health of our nation, our families, ourselves, it won't be put right by anyone else. It has to be us. You have the power to absolutely transform your own health and happiness and those around you. This year, I was named as a global leader of plus size fitness. However, it's funny because it's often the topics of obesity and diet that I'm asked to comment on, which is ironic because I'm still obese and I still have a very difficult relationship with sugar. I don't think that we have a huge problem with obesity in this country. I think we have a huge problem with happiness. And, and this lack of happiness is leading to disease. Disease like obesity, disease like depression, diabetes, cancers, high blood pressure, all these things that are costing the NHS so much, but costing us so much pain, causing us so much pain. The good news is though, this can be addressed and it does, it feels incredible to know that the work on Two Fat to Run is something that helps women feel better about themselves, you know, when so much around us does the opposite. And it's obvious that, that there's an appetite for it. Our website has had half a million hits this year alone and we've got 20,000 or so fans on social media and a growing customer base for our online coaching programs and ebooks. 2015 has been an incredible year for me personally. I run the London Marathon in April. I've done five half marathons and heaps of smaller races. There was the 2015 Best Blog in the Running Awards, becoming an ambassador for This Girl Can Run In and Race For Life. And of course, who can forget being on ITVs this morning for six weeks, getting the nation moving with my five weeks to 5K programme. But my job's not done. In many ways, it's just beginning, and I have some catastrophic plans for 2016. Our online running club, the Clubhouse, is going to go through a complete revamp, and we're bringing in experts and dietitians and yoga instructors, and also we're going to be training up an army of two fat to run coaches to make changes in their own communities. As women, we each have the opportunity to inspire others by our actions and to change the health outcomes for future generations. We don't need New Year's resolutions each year to do this. Tiny, compounding actions, done collectively by many over a sustained period of time, that's what leads to real change in our world. So start today and attract the health and happiness that you truly deserve. Have a wonderful, wonderful Christmas. And please do come back in 2016 to join me in my quest to get the world running. Running and smiling. Happy Christmas and I will see you next year. Mwah.